Right, you wrote on your Substack, I think you put out this morning, didn't you? Uh, Substack's lines, but who's next for the Reds? Yeah. And that's just the way that we live in. Like, we've got, there's one one down, more to come, and I yeah. think we'd all agree that's a kind of the case. I don't know if you're reading the tea leaves of what I'm seeing online, and I think Fritio Romano put this out as well, Ben Jacobs as well. Uh, Romeo Lavia seems to be the, the, the new name uh, on everyone's lips. I say new name. Uh, he's, been, yeah. he's been knocked on out a lot, but more yeah. in case of like the. I don't know what the word is. A ramping up. I don't even know the correct phrase. It's the more hottest, momentum. The hot more, name. Yeah, more yeah. momentum around it. So, uh, for Richard Romano, tweeted Liverpool in the race since Romeo Lavia since Monday. No changes, even even though they signed Sobers like McAllister. The Reds remain keen on signing Lavia. He's on a list with Taram. Arsenal's still interested, but that depends on Thomas Partey's exit. I think Ben in Southampton asked £50 million fee. So, is he the hot name on the Is he the one we're hearing things about? Because there's Taram, there's him. Like, is, is Lavia the, the next one? Is, is he the one we should be looking at? Well, then? I haven't heard any change in, in the situation. Obviously, I don't think... in It's probably just a, a wording of the tweet, but I don't think in the race since Monday... You know, is 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 in the sense of Lavia's interest has been well trailed. He's he's been a player of interest for, you know, for months. Yeah. You know, no, not just not just a week, but I think what makes it more likely is just the position he plays and and the, the, you know he's a deeper line midfielder. You know, we're obviously we we we've got Turam in the uh, in the mix who, who's played a bit more of an eighth. Probably, probably a bit more attacking, or sort of, you know, likes to play up the field, doesn't he? Than than, than being a defensive midfield player, um, that makes it a bit more likely. I think probably as well. I mean, Southampton won fifty million. I'd say good luck yeah. with that. I think probably as well the fee would would look. You know, if you if you look at the sort of the, the alternatives for Lavia, who've been linked, I think Chelsea, Keane. They've got a need for midfielders. Okay, I'd keep a, I'd keep a close eye on Chelsea in there. I don't think City. I think they haven't signed Kovacic. Still got Calvin Phillips there, carrying you know, carrying him at the moment. Going to spend big on Guardiol. Um, Arsenal. Okay, that would be a that would be a big move for, for them, given they've just signed Declan Rice. But if Party was to leave, he had it. So there's competition, but. I think the fee would would make it. I think it'd be closer to thirty if you're selling someone like Lavia. You know, I don't think Southampton are in a position financially, haven't been relegated, and with a lot of players that are going to be looking to, <coughs> excuse me, to get out, I don't think they're in a position to sort of play hardball. I don't, and I don't expect Lavia to play in the Championship next season. So I think that would be the way that you'd look at it. You'd look at Liverpool have got a chance to get this player. He plays in a position where there's a, a greater need probably. Certainly in the longer term, um, but I haven't. Again, I haven't heard anything that sort of moved. That I, I wouldn't say Liverpool have, have suddenly like stepped up their interest or whatever. But I think that that's the next step, isn't it? We I think we said that last Monday. We said the next step is now Liverpool to start bidding for players and start you know putting offers in mm-hmm. or meeting release clauses. As it turned out, that's the next step. Are they going to put an offer in for 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 Lavier? And I certainly don't expect it to be. First offer to be what Southampton are sort of asking for there. I don't think I don't and I don't think they should. I don't think Liverpool should be paying fifty million for a nineteen year old who doesn't go straight into their team. Yeah, Ben Ben Jacobs tweeted this morning because he, he covers Chelsea quite a bit. He says Chelsea are focused on Moises Casado for now. Yeah. Liverpool are serious exploring um, uh, Southampton value of fifty, but Liverpool feel like a lower fee could be possible. And and that's kind of the, that's kind of this one, is that We've got two lads now who go bang straight into the team. Is your next one the, the young lads you get involved yeah. and see how he gets involved? I think so. That, and again, it, it, it does. It, it feels like a very... Listen, if you say Liverpool are going to sign a lad from Leipzig and then one from Southampton, they're kind of playing the hits a little bit here. You know, we've seen this. this <laughs> it's another one. We've, we've seen them do this before. So it is another one that takes a lot of boxes. The, I suppose it is. You're right. Having already signed two effective number eights, it does feel like... And we'll, we'll touch upon Tehran in a bit, but like... From a pure numbers and squad building point of view, if you're looking to get another one in, it probably does have to someone be someone who plays defensive think, because there's already so many options. You've already got like, you know, you've got McAllister and Slovis, you've got Jones, you've got Elliot, you know, even Cody Gappo we've seen play Thiago. In, in Thiago as well. Like, there's a lot of attacking mates there. Unless you're selling somebody, it does feel like a more defensive mind. It just makes sense, really, not, it, just from yeah. a pure squad building point of view. And of course, the question maybe. Flip side of that is what do they see by Chetich as uh, and where you know how quickly is he going to be there because he's not much younger than um, Lavia you know he's not played he's, he's played about fifteen games fewer in his career maybe twenty games fewer yeah. so 
he's not. It's not like you know. Yeah, but by chess is just here and Lavia is there. It, 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 I do, Liverpool might see it a lot closer than that. They might say, "Well, we've got him." You know, like we, we don't we don't need a player of that that type. Um, if they do, I mean, it, it's nice to have both, isn't it? You know, if, if you if you think both of them are, are high level talents, then it is good to have as many as you can get in there. But you've got you've still got the doubts. You know, we, we've been very positive in the first part of this show, but we huge doubts over Fabinho, huge doubts yeah. over Jordan Henderson, still doubts over where the others fit in. I think you've still got to ask questions. Is Curtis Jones, at, you know, going to build on what he's done at the last um, part of the season? I think it looks promising in the Euros. I think he's been really good for England in the, in the 21 Euros. Harvey Elliott's had a little moment in there as well, but there's still question marks about where where he he pitches up long term. You know, what position he plays and whether he's off the level. Still, still a question there. You know, I still think he's very much worth persevering with and given given chances to. So. There's still a little bit of unknown in that Liverpool midfield um, picture. I've always just thought if Sobosly hadn't signed and Lavia was the next one, sort of right, right, they're gonna. I would, I would be very, very sort of concerned about that from a Liverpool point of view because I think he's not. There's no guarantee where he's gonna pitch up and end up in terms of his, his ability. He's a gamble. But I think if you've got two in that you think, well, they've made a difference straight away to the team and we can get this guy for what we feel is a good price, good deal. Okay, maybe Liverpool be more inclined to make that that move now that they've sort of fixed what they what they feel were the biggest priorities. Um, but we'll wait and see. I mean, still, there's still Taran being linked. I'm sure he'll carry on to be linked, especially now France got stuff last night by uh, by Ukraine yeah and let's we might as well talk about him then because he is the other one who's been and there's been a lot of talk maybe the odds waiting for this Euros to end we'll, we'll soon find out because France are like say they got beat last yeah. night 3-1 and they're out um, it's a question there as well isn't it yeah and, and, and we've got a Discord question I, I've got to touch on it now so Jamie and, and Simon both asked the same question does Neil think we'll go for either Lavi or Tram or could he still go for both given that there seems to be a lot of ground we're putting on both like yeah. both would be I mean, four midfielders in one I mean maybe but like that's very very odd for Liverpool to do that, unless unless someone leaves. Yeah, another, um, another player. Yeah, well, unless two players leave, I, I would say. I mean, that that would be. You, know, you can't you can't play them all. If you're paying paying ninety five, you're talking about Lavi and Tram. Best case scenario, you're talking about probably another seventy million. You know, you're talking about 100, 160, 170 million pounds worth of midfielders. You can't play them all, and you've still got midfielders who are good. You know, let's let's. Not, not get carried away in the idea that all Liverpool's midfielders need to go in the bin. There's still some that can play and will will, will play. So I wouldn't expect it to be both. Definitely not. Um, the work that goes in is is sort of obviously the background work, isn't it? Is is the is there a deal to be done? What's the player like? What do we know? Do we know his character? Does he fancy it? You know what? What's his wage sort of? demand's going to be like okay that's that's natural Liverpool will know that for a lot of players that they're not going to sign you know they will they will have an idea of the situation so I don't think it's sort of because they've they've looked at a player for a long time they looked at Mason Mount for a long time and backed away from that they looked at Jude Bellingham for a long time and backed away from that so I don't think they'll sort of think oh no we've put the work and let's get them and I'd, I'd be amazed if they signed both Lavia and Turam Um that would, that would be a, yeah. That was, that would make picking a, a sort of expected eleven very difficult. I would imagine. Yeah, you're right. I suppose the the, the after signing Sobers lives that the, the the squad nature and the non homegrown stuff is that there is one space available now. Lavia he's under nineteen, so he, he can go into that. Yeah. In theory, you could, if you, from pure building, you could get them both. But then you can't buy a defender unless he's English or a kid as well. So from a, you're right, it, it does feel mad. Like I suppose. It depends what you see Kefren Taram as, because there is some thoughts that he can also play deeper. I know he has played advanced at times, but he, you know he's got the mm. he's got a pedigree of playing deeper, so maybe it might just be that he's got the profile both. to play deeper. Yeah, he's absolutely. got the physical yeah, physical absolutely. profile to, to, if you need them to. I think it's also interesting, isn't it? You know, it, it shows really we, we've all really expected them and and been told a little bit that you know what Liverpool need is is that is this kind of physical output. That doesn't mean you have to be six foot five or, or whatever, or, or you know, absolutely sort of a monster in in terms of your, your, your sort of your, your physical 
build. It just means that you need to be able to do it and do it regularly. You know, you need to be able to get about the pitch. You need to be able to protect the ball, use your body smartly, and to do it, you know, every three days or every four days. So, you know, Lavia and Turam are not the same. They're similar in terms of their age and and, and where they play or sort of the, the the skills, if you like. But they're not they're not the same type of player. So it it doesn't mean it shows that Liverpool aren't sort of looking at that they haven't just identified that, you know, we've got to get that type of player, we've got to get that type of sort of midfielder in. I think it's more about, okay, now we've got this and this in, in the play, what sort of what would what would fit well with that and what would be able to maybe succeed someone like Henderson, someone like Fabinho, someone like Thiago. Um you know, don't forget those 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 three really are all in the the back end of the careers, certainly at Liverpool. Um, so, I think it's it's going to be interesting. That I, I saw I saw Fabrizio Romano said, you know, the plan has always been to sign three midfielders. We'll see. We'll we'll see whether that that, that ends up being the case. I don't expect it to be four. Um, certainly not four first choice midfielders or first team midfielders. Um, that, that feels like that would be, a, you know, going from <laughs> famine to feast. Yeah, listen, we all like it, but yeah, it, just, it just doesn't seem logical given where we are. I suppose the would we all like it? I mean, that, that, I, well, I think it, it makes people love signing. So, in particular, yeah. yes, I suppose it. I think a lot of this depends on you've already touched on before. It depends what your thoughts are on Fabinho. Yeah. Has Fabinho just had a blip? Yeah. Or has Fabinho done? Because if Fabinho's yeah. done, Liverpool do need someone else. Because at the moment, you're relying on Fabinho, Henderson. Or a, an injured Stefan Bacchetta, which is your six options, really, at, the, at this moment. Again, who knows what Tent Alexander Arnold plays in this part? But I reckon if you said a few people, no, for example, and if you said like Liverpool are going to cash in on one of those three players I've just mentioned that who are aging and got two in, yeah. I, I reckon there'd be some, some going for that. Really? Yeah. I put, a, I put something else on Twitter yesterday. Do you, do you think Liverpool would be a stronger team? Let's just say if they started this next season with with Lavia instead of Fabinho. Yeah, I don't. I think. I mean, question. there's there's no there's only one answer, isn't it? And it's no. Yeah. I mean, for so it's it's a case of what what will you pay for someone who's going to have to wait yeah. and, and sort of eventually take over? You know, as much as Fabinho's had a dreadful season, and I do have serious reservation you can't compare him to, to Lavia or to Ram at this stage you know he he has proven that he can do the job and Henderson the same they, they they can do the job they can carry out all the tactics and if you've got two new players already trying to adjust to the first team you need a little bit of that older consistency sort of right you know on pitch guidance maybe so I think Lavia and to Ram well, Lavia more so for the future Hundred percent. If you can get a nice deal done, you know that, that suits thirty-five million, whatever it, whatever the price is that they deem is is good. If you're going, if you're going into sort of the territory they paid for Sobosly, I think it's a huge sort of. You'd have to you'd have to absolutely be convinced that he's yeah, he's yeah, just yeah. he's just top. He's going to be top level. He's going to change our our entire sort of structure. And I'm listen. I, I I saw a bit of Southampton last season. I saw a bit of him. He's a very good player, very good talented player, but he's not that. He's well, not. You, to answer your question, if they pay for that fund, then he better be better than. Well, yeah, well, yeah, yeah, exactly. Yeah, yeah. he has to go in, doesn't he? Uh, really, I, I well, we've said that before, I suppose. But yeah, he does. He, he pretty much has to go into the team, doesn't he, straight away? And I'm not sure he does at this stage, personally. No, yeah, absolutely. And again, just to round it up, they have got Stefan Bacetic, and he is the thing, and it's like, yeah, he, it could just be that they think he's the future. He is the he is. Fabinho's replacement oh we've already got him and then because that's the point on Lavia when I, when I first saw the Lavia things I was like yeah I get it good, good young player but like Liverpool have got a 19 year old lad who probably plays in very similar positions who, they, who've had, who they've had for a while and have trusted to play games he did what you said before about Chamberlain I'm sorry about Keita he got in the team and stayed in the team Like he, he, he showed yeah. he can do it before that's why that one's always it's been like it's, but again I know we've seen Patessa's play, play fair before there is a lot of Again, it's hard to connect too many dots. I just don't. It's hard because I don't really it, understand what the plan is. It's also he's he's going to have a, a moment in the next twelve months by Chetich where we're going to probably have, or you're going to have people in your comments saying he's not that good. He's let you know. There you go. You all got hyped up, and he's not that good. He's going to have a dip. Yeah, he's going to have a dip. Yeah, gonna have a dip. Okay, so John, you know, he's going to have that dip where people are going to go. Ah, is he that good? Lavi is nineteen, so he's probably going to have that at some point as well. So if you're paying fifty million pound for a player it, it, it sort of it makes it a lot 
sort of more pronounced when when the player has that inevitable dip. He, he, like he's so young, so I think you'd have to be absolutely hundred percent sure that he is just going to be a staple of your midfield going forward. You know, Liverpool got by Chetich for a song. You know, they, for less than a quarter of a million pounds. That that means that you can you can you can ride out these sort of ups and downs. You can let him you know recover a bit longer from his stress injury things like that. when when you've got a player who you have spent your budget on you've you've committed to it makes it a lot more difficult. So I'll be wary of it, but he's still he's still obviously a fine a fine player with um you know a huge potential career ahead of him but that's all it is at the moment he's only played 36 games in his professional career it's, it's still only potential you know you, it, it would be unlike Liverpool to go and blow I'll say blow I mean that sounds a bit negative but to go and splash out that much money on someone where there's so many uncertainties about their their future, you know where they're going to be. Yeah, absolutely, absolutely makes makes a lot of sense. Like I say we're looking at them field stuff out as and when it develops, which I'm sure there might be more to come. Hey guys, hope you enjoy watching that clip from our journal inside show. If you want to check out the entire show, it is available on RedmenPlus.com right now, and I've got a special offer for you. If you go over to RedmenPlus.com and sign up as a yearly club captain and enter the code Bobby B O B B Y, you'll get that yearly subscription for half price. So yeah, RedmenPlus.com yearly club captain subscription. Use the code Bobby B O B B Y. Get it for half price and check out Journal Insights, the Roberto Firmino documentary, and tons tons. Tons more amazing Liverpool content. So yeah, head over there and I'll see you there. Hey, so pre-season is just around the corner for the mighty Reds. But if you want to spend your days, weeks and hours celebrating a Liverpool legend, then check out Bobby Firmino, Best in the World, our three-part documentary series. Episodes two and three exclusively streaming on RedmenPlus.com right now with full interviews from so many of our amazing contributors, including the Liverpool skipper Jordan Henderson, the greatest goal scorer the club's ever seen, Ian Rush, and a hell of a lot more right now go to redmenplus.com all episodes of Bobby Firmino best in the world streaming today